What if I told you that while NASA was celebrating their latest achievements, SpaceX quietly built something that could end NASA's space program forever? We're talking about an 80-meter tall monster rocket packing over 9,000 tons of thrust. But here's the scary part, they built it in complete secrecy. Today, we're diving deep into SpaceX's V-3 Super Heavy, the rocket that's making Mars missions look easy and NSA engineers update their resumes. Stick around, because what I'm about to show you will change everything you thought you knew about space travel. Just three months ago, NASA's top engineers were laughing at SpaceX's ambitious plans. Today, those same engineers are probably polishing their LinkedIn profiles. What changed everything wasn't just that extra height. It was what NASA discovered SpaceX was hiding inside that massive structure. While NASA was busy celebrating their Artemis program finally getting off the ground, SpaceX quietly conducted a test that shattered every assumption about rocket physics. They didn't just make their super heavy booster taller, they solved a fundamental problem that has plagued rocket science for 70 years, the fuel efficiency death spiral. Here's the nightmare scenario NASA is facing right now. Their SLS rocket costs $4.1 billion per launch and can barely lift 27 tons to the moon. SpaceX V3 Monster? It can potentially lift 150 tons to the same destination for less than $100 million. That's not competition, folks. That's complete annihilation. But wait, it gets worse. When NASA's sources inside SpaceX leaked the internal engineering reports, they discovered something terrifying. The 80-meter design wasn't SpaceX's final goal. It was just the testing phase for something much more ambitious. What NASA discovered next should have been impossible. SpaceX wasn't just innovating, they were perfecting a design that Soviet engineers had conceived 50 years ago. The same design NASA had rejected as too complex and economically unfeasible. Let me take you back to the 1960s. The N1 rocket program was supposed to beat America to the moon. It failed spectacularly four times, killing the Soviet lunar program forever. But buried in those failures was an engineering concept, so brilliant that it took SpaceX's manufacturing revolution to make it work. It's called integrated hot staging. Think about this. Every American rocket throws away millions of dollars worth of hardware during separation. It's like buying a new transmission every time you shift gears in your car. Absolutely insane, right? The Soviets knew this was wasteful, so they designed the staging system directly into the rocket's body. No waste, no thrown components, pure efficiency. NASA engineers called it impossible to manufacture. SpaceX just proved them wrong. The V3 Super Heavy builds the staging system as part of the main structure, eliminating the multi-million dollar throwaway ring that every previous version required. But here's what's keeping NASA officials awake at night. This isn't just about saving money. The integrated design creates a longer, better protected pathway for engine exhaust. This means those critical grid fins that control landing take significantly less damage during flight. And speaking of those grid fins, SpaceX made another change that has NASA's aerodynamics experts questioning everything they thought they knew. For over a century, Every rocket ever built has followed the same fundamental rule, symmetrical control surfaces for balanced flight. It's been basic physics since day one. SpaceX just threw that rulebook in the trash and discovered something that shouldn't work, but absolutely does. The V3 Super Heavy uses only three grid fins positioned at completely unequal angles. This creates an intentional imbalance that should make the rocket uncontrollable. NASA's computer simulations predicted immediate catastrophic failure. They were dead wrong. During the flip maneuver, when this 80-meter giant turns around to head back for landing, those asymmetrical fins actually help the rocket tumble in a controlled way. It uses less fuel, happens faster, and provides more precision during the final approach to the landing tower. It's like discovering that a three-wheeled car corners better than a four-wheeled one. It violates everything we thought we understood about aerodynamic control, but SpaceX flight data doesn't lie. The breakthrough came from analyzing an engine failure during Flight 7. When one of the center engines failed to relight, the three-fin design actually compensated better than a traditional four-fin system would have. 
It created a self-correcting flight path that kept the booster on target for a successful catch. NASA spent 60 years perfecting symmetrical control systems. SpaceX just made them obsolete in a single test flight. But the grid fins aren't even the most revolutionary part of the V3 design. That honor belongs to what's powering this 80-meter monster, the Raptor 3 engine. When the first images leaked, NASA's propulsion experts thought it was a joke. This couldn't possibly be a complete engine. It looked like someone had removed all the external components, leaving just the bare skeleton. They were right about one thing. SpaceX had removed almost everything. They were wrong about why. The flying spaghetti monster design of earlier Raptor engines required massive heat shields, complex sensor networks, and redundant safety systems just to survive the violence of launch and re-entry. Raptor 3 eliminates the need for most of these protections by integrating cooling directly into the engine structure. Every component that needs temperature control now has 3D printed cooling channels built directly into the metal. This isn't just advanced manufacturing, it's a complete reimagining of how rocket engines should work. NASA's RS-25 engines, supposedly the pinnacle of American rocket technology, look like steam locomotives compared to this. But here's the real kicker. Each Raptor 3 engine produces 280 tons of thrust while weighing just 1.6 ton. That's a thrust to weight ratio of 175 to 1. NASA's best engines struggle to achieve 60 to 1. With 33 of these engines clustered together, the V3 Super Heavy generates 9,240 tons of total thrust. That's more than three times the power of the Saturn V rocket that took us to the moon. But unlike the Saturn V, which was thrown away after a single use, this monster lands itself and flies again within weeks. While NASA contractors take three to four years to build a single rocket, SpaceX is mass-producing super-heavy boosters like cars on an assembly line. The secret isn't just automation, it's a manufacturing philosophy that NASA's bureaucratic structure can never match. The V3 design eliminates thousands of individual components by integrating multiple systems into single pieces. Those cooling channels aren't added to the engine, they're printed as part of the engine. The fuel transfer system isn't assembled from separate parts, it's manufactured as one continuous unit. Booster 18, the first complete V3 prototype, took just eight months from start to finish. NASA's SLS program has been in development for 13 years and has produced exactly four flight-ready vehicles at a cost of $23 billion. But SpaceX isn't building just one V3 booster. Satellite imagery shows at least six more in various stages of construction at Starbase. By the time NASA launches their next Artemis mission, SpaceX could have a fleet of V3 boosters conducting multiple launches per month. The economic implications are staggering. NASA's cost per kilogram to lunar orbit? Approximately $150,000. SpaceX projected cost with V3? Less than $1,000 per kilogram. That's not a competitive advantage, it's complete economic obliteration of everything NASA represents. Everything about the V3 system points toward one inevitable conclusion. SpaceX is preparing to make NASA's entire Mars exploration program look like a high school science project. NASA's Mars sample return mission, bringing back a few rocks from Mars, has a projected cost of $11 billion and won't launch until the 2030s. SpaceX V3 system could potentially land 100 tons of equipment on Mars for the same cost, establishing a permanent human presence decades before NASA even attempts their crewed mission. The math is brutal. NASA's Artemis program aims to put four astronauts on the moon for a few days. SpaceX's V3 system could launch 150 tons to lunar orbit in a single mission enough equipment to build a permanent lunar base. But here's the most devastating revelation, what SpaceX discovered during their fuel system testing. The V3's extended tanks don't just carry more fuel, they enable a new type of mission architecture that makes traditional rocket design completely obsolete. Three weeks ago, SpaceX conducted a classified test involving rapid fuel transfer between multiple V3 prototypes. The implications are staggering. Instead of launching one massive mission to Mars, SpaceX could launch multiple smaller missions that combine an Earth orbit, 
creating spacecraft larger and more capable than anything NSA has ever conceived. But there's one more secret SpaceX has been hiding something that makes the 80-meter V3 look like just the beginning of their assault on NASA's space dominance. Internal SpaceX documents leaked last month reveal plans for Starship Block 3 that should be physically impossible, not just taller than the current design wider, significantly wider. We're talking about increasing the diameter from 9 meters to potentially 12 meters, creating a rocket system that dwarfs anything in human history. A 12-meter Starship would require 42 Raptor 3 engines, generating over 11,760 tons of thrust. The payload capacity would exceed 300 tons to low Earth orbit enough to launch entire space stations in single missions. NASA's largest current capability might eventually lift 46 tons to lunar orbit. SpaceX Block 3 design could potentially deliver 10 times that amount for a fraction of the cost. So here we are. SpaceX just built an 80-meter monster that makes NASA's entire space program look like a museum exhibit. The real question isn't whether NASA can catch up, it's whether they'll even exist as a launch provider in 10 years. The space race isn't over. It just got a whole lot more interesting. What do you think? Is NASA's dominance truly finished, or do they have a comeback plan we haven't seen yet? Let me know in the comments below, I read every single one. And if this blew your mind, make sure to subscribe because what SpaceX is planning next is even more impossible than what we just covered.